Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching The Haunting of Hill House, Season 1, Episode 2, Open Casket. The last episode was insane. I definitely am my own worst enemy when it comes to horror films because I overthink things, I overanalyze things. I, I spook myself before the spooks happen, and then when the spooks happen, I'm spooked. <laughs> but I am very excited to keep watching to explore the rest of this show. And the ending, I mean, she's dead. That is tragic. Thankfully, I, I mean, I feel like someone dying in the first episode is easier to take than someone dying at the end of a season but at the same time they seem like a very big if dysfunctional at this point family and seeing her as a little girl that that that's a lot and I'm stressed about this house like can we just would burning it to the ground stop the haunted activity I don't know thank you so much Albert for sponsoring this show if you are watching this on YouTube you can find the unedited versions on my Patreon and let's go I'm guessing your parents have talked to you about why you might be having these dreams. They're not dreams. And I'm guessing you're a smart boy. Does she not There's believe that there were really ghosts at their house? It's a great chance to... I think is. I don't know. Like, in your head of grandma in the hospital of I wouldn't want to see a loved one of mine dead. Like, I... I better. I really I don't need this. <laughs> this room's gross. La la la. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is such, extra such a love, sure like, she looks just like she's supposed the people to that do this are amazing, so I think, done, you know. She will... Is our forever house. Oh. You made this? I designed it, yeah. I designed them. And Daddy built them. Mm -hmm. Every house needs a heart, and this is ours because that's where we spend the most time together. Oh, you know, a house this poor is family. Like body. The walls are like bones. Okay, this is really creepy in our creepy house to talk about this. And I won't have to move ever again. Oh, they were so close to their beautiful dreams. <laughs> this family, it just, I, it breaks your heart knowing what happens, doesn't it? Oh, he drew a picture of a little kid in the woods. Oh. Okay. Everything's fine. I appreciate it. Not, not for that one. <laughs> so if they know there is something spooky in that room, why would you let a family with a hundred children live in your house? Or the house? You'd warn them. Unless they are actually secretly evil demon people. They're just the cutest little things. <laughs> oh. Kids have been hearing them at night. They've heard them every night since we got here. I couldn't say. But Mrs. and I, we don't stay on the property after dark. Fucking hell. No. These people are so creepy. Dogs. He's daddy. Because they make such a point of, oh, we don't stay here after dark. They must know things happen after dark. Come on, Mom. I Thank you for dropping the fire, <laughs> Bill. Why did that spook her so much? What on earth is going on? Six thousand a month. That's right. It's ridiculously extortionate what they charge. Like, they take and advantage of vulnerable for, people. He had insurance. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I could still it's do is that why she makes a point with her business of giving people a break and, you know, not taking advantage of them when they're desperate? Because funerals shouldn't be a business. Rehab shouldn't be a business. This family. It's so interesting and sad, sort of seeing all the different ways they coped and didn't cope. He can do it. He's gonna do it. It's not that simple. Especially not if he can't have all the trauma that he's been through, dealt with, and given that his trauma is, you know... Ghosts. Where'd you get those, Allie? Hmm. The mall. <clears throat> practically begged me. She has to be like a cool Aunt Theo. I did not. <laughs> nope. It's just there. It surprised me. Ask him. Sure if you have a healthy him. marriage, ask I him. It's probably I'm just constantly <laughs> expecting something creepy to happen. What do you want? I don't even... Why are you banging on the wall? I I'm not. You are. I'm calling my name. Oh shit. You're banging on the wall to tell me about the stupid dogs. <gasps> oh lord. What was that? It's a 
there a lion in the walls? Oh my god, these poor babies. Hey. Hey, what, what's with the screaming? Did you hear that? What was that? What was what? There were these, <sighs> these loud bangs all over the walls. I believe you. I'm sorry if your kids are this freaked out every night and it's multiple children. It's not like it's just Nelly, the baby. Pipes. It was shaking the paintings. It's oh. Oh, is this the phone call that Nellie's dead? She's dead. Shut up. The baby what sister. What the fuck do you mean? Well, he's wrong. That's yeah, denial. <laughs> the first stage of grief. I, I couldn't really hear him because I, uh, I saw. No, no, he wouldn't know. She wouldn't. So awful. He's him. trying to sort of talked to his sister about how he saw his sister's other sister's ghost and she's trying to process the concept of her being dead and i just oh yeah, he can't just not tell us what happened he can't she was in trouble i told you to find her i told you anger go. it is so true as well that even if you take kind of ghosts out of this concept traumatic thing events can destroy families was that like the dogs trying to come for the cat, or was it a lion trying to come for its kittens or something? Oh. Oh, the box reminded her of this. Found this upstairs. It's called a eulogy. Is this why she went into funerals? It's up to you. Some people say goodbye. The sense of peace they brought her, or? Hey, it's okay. Wait, wait, wait a second. Hey, like, wait, wait, you little kitty. Oh, Lord. Okay, I'm right here. Oh lord. Oh lord, that's gross. Oh, how could you do this for a job? I don't understand how anybody can do this for a job. Like it's so necessary. Dead. Pick up the body. Does he even know that she's dead? No idea. If he doesn't, that's on him. He no. deserves to be here. You're not giving him time to get here. He missed her wedding. We're not going to let him miss her funeral, too. He has time. Oh lord. But I'm not leaving her in a fr It's okay. He probably is just having bad dreams. If you don't You'll be upset later. It's gonna be okay, Charlotte. That's why she's so big on it. Here, come with me. It's easier to take help from a strange someone that's not family sometimes. I wouldn't want to see someone I love dead. Lying there, not moving, not able to breathe and be there for you. In the time it will take me to explain to you what to do with her, I could just do it myself. So I'm doing her myself. This is insane. It is. Excuse us, please. But if this is her job, if this is something she does day in, day out, and it's her business, she's so used to doing this with other people's loved ones, maybe in a weird way it will help her grieve, in a way that none of us can understand. It will help her process it. Though I also feel like she'll probably have a ghostly experience, and I don't want to watch her do it. But you know, it's fine, I'm fine. fine. I'm so enjoying this show. <laughs> owe her this. What happened to... Her family, like to her husband, and he didn't because she was not doing well. And just how can you process it? That's your baby sister in a bag. Just can't. You don't have to look. This is different to an open casket because. Are they still sleeping? Of course, did they all die? Well, that's what's happening, Steve. Oh I don't God! Care how you get here? Just get you're here. taking on too much. I'm sorry. You're on the phone to your brother while you're. Steve, do you know what I'm doing right now? Oh fuck! I'm elbow deep in our system. I don't believe you. Oh, did they kill it? Why would you just give away the last just one, the only just, one left? Just, 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 just quiet. Just, it's not oh. fair. Just, 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 it's not fair. Stop it! Is she okay? I'm sorry, every single one of these kids is having traumatic experiences in this house. It's a tough thing for a kid, and we should Look, she's gonna have a pretty messed up view of death coming out of this no matter what. 
which wouldn't have happened if you hadn't have... Oof. Go ahead. Good communication. Talk about your problems. Any questions you have are completely normal, okay? What are you doing to her? should be here too for this conversation. I just finished embalming her. I'm waiting for her to open her eyes and there for me a jump scare. I'm so excited. You're gonna look amazing. The store's closed. I'm done. You do? It's just... Uh, addiction is so hard because you have to hold him accountable while, you know, he's making his choices and doing things, but at the end of the day it is an illness and just finding the fine line is so hard. Is everything okay? You fixed her. Well, that's what I do. This is why she ended up down this path. She about to see Nell's ghost because. Holy shit. Just go upstairs. Just go upstairs. Close the door. I'm not okay right now. <laughs> These poor traumatized people, and it's even worse when you know ghosts are real. I think, given the understanding she's come to about death, in a lot of weird ways, the ways that no one like us, normal people who haven't been through what she's been through or see things the way she's seen things, wouldn't understand that for her, that was healing. And not, why, why are we panning in on the house? Holy shit. Okay, so at the end, the porch light flashing, come home. Does that mean their mum wants them to join her in the afterlife? <laughs> um, this was another very, very good episode. Um, I found something about, like, the spooky things were spooky this episode, do not get me wrong, but they weren't quite as spooky as the first one. I don't know if it's my headspace. I think it's kind of going and knowing the level of spooky helps as well. Um, and I think this show, what makes me, I mean, I'm only two episodes in, what makes me enjoy the show so much, and I presume is why I've heard such wonderful things about it, is that, yes, it has its scare, it's a horror show, yes, it has its scary elements, yes, you know, it has moments of dread, but it's, I'm so interested in the story of this house, of this family, my heart breaks seeing these kids and knowing the trauma they're kind of in the middle of going through, and how it's going to shape each and every one of their lives, um, even the ones that seem like they have it all together and have made a good life, um, a life that, you know, to the outside eye would not be seen as, like, a trauma-affected life, are affected by the trauma, whether it's Stephen writing ghost hunting ghost books or whatever and kind of losing his family and his marriage not being great, whether it's, um, Shirley becoming a mortician and... I mean, I'm not saying everyone who becomes a mortician has to have been through some kind of terrible trauma and, like I said, those are such valuable people because we if no one wanted to do that job I don't know how society would function but you could really I loved how they sort of told the story of how it's kind of like what the mum said you know this is going to shape her view of death but something about being the person to make everything okay to piece everything back together helped soothe her realizing that when she saw her mum it wasn't going to be some terrible corpse with beetles coming out of it it was just her mum lying there really did not mean the world to her and I think that is really important and that is how she heals and while I do think her being the one to do everything with Nell was insanity I, I really oh my goodness I also think it actually would have been really really good for her in a lot of ways what with how she functions with grief how she deals with it you know something about being the one to make Nell okay again is sort of gonna be there for her um <sighs> this family, I mean, you can really see the way each kid is shaped, you know, the three that are the most obviously shaped are obviously Nell. I don't know obviously everything, I feel like there's still more to Nell's story, but she was the one that was seeing the bent neck lady, um, <sighs> nightmares about that. Um, but it seems like at some point she had her life together. Now obviously no one knows the truth of what's going on, but it seems as though at least when she was getting married, her siblings were kind of like, oh we're so proud of you because you've made it despite everything. Um, but then when we last saw her alive, she was crumbling, she was having the dreams again, and it seemed as though, you know, her siblings were like, oh, it's Nell, Nell's always like this. You know, they didn't maybe take her as seriously as they would have done had they known what was going to happen, and I still don't know whether she killed herself or whether a ghost killed her. 
because I feel like a ghost killed their mum and then the dad's line was that she killed herself. Like, that's just kind of what you do in this family. A ghost kills you and the family say it was an act, it was suicide. Um, but I think clearly she was struggling a lot and maybe her husband died or something and that was a trigger because he's just not been mentioned. No one said, oh, I believe his name was Arthur. No one said, oh, has someone called Arthur? So it kind of makes me think, I mean, potentially he, like, cheated on her and left. But regardless, I feel like something traumatic happened there with bad endings. And then Luke being an, an addict, um, he, I feel as though he probably is someone that rather than kind of, I mean, he probably has the addictive gene, but I think it's probably more a case with him of like, it dulls the senses, it takes away the trauma and the memories. And I don't know what he saw in terms of inside the house, but he is seeing a weird, creepy girl. And I don't, I'm stressed about that because he keeps seeing her in the daytime and maybe she was just a neighborhood child. That is just creepy. Um, but you can see how he is very visibly being affected by the trauma of their past. And I recently reacted on Patreon to um, the film Beautiful Boy, which is obviously about a father and his son's drug addiction and trying to deal with that. And it's just such a hard line, isn't it, to know where to draw the line. Because when you love someone and they're an addict, you know that it's not entirely their fault, that once you, like, addiction is an illness. But there is also agency there in some ways, you know. The hardest part is the person has to truly be ready to be sober, like ready to put the work in, ready to stay strong, and even then things can set them back, you know, it is a huge struggle, and as a family member or a loved one, it's okay to draw the line and to kind of be like, I can't keep giving anymore because it's draining me and I have to take myself serious, put myself first, even though that feels like a slap in the face to the loved one. Um, and you just feel so powerless in that situation, and I feel like Nell's mental health, it seems, was like this but also none of them ever really thought she would do anything too serious which part of me feels as though perhaps she went to the house to try and like confront the root of it all and that's what killed her she was just dancing around the house i don't know um i oh, just this poor family and then you have um theo i can call her shirley theo who she, i noticed when she was holding a coffee mug she seemed to be doing that with her hands um but she wears gloves all the time so much so that her niece wants to be just like her and and bought gloves and she's living kind of in a house on her sister's property which suggests she's not like the most currently financially stable or maybe she just needs the comfort of having a loved one there totally valid whatever the case is you know they, all of these kids are being so affected by what happened and i suppose to the outside world you would just say oh their mum committed suicide and um they ran out of the house in the middle of the night and then there were all the press and everything you know that's what shaped them um but i just oh I just appreciate when you see those kids and you think like the bright futures they were going to have and their parents weren't perfect they made mistakes they had arguments about how to parent but they were really trying to be good parents trying to encourage their children to be who they were and to be open-minded and to not dwell on their fears and it just is so sad to think of where they end up I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through with having lost their baby sister um or for um Oh my goodness, his name, Luke, his um, twin sister, because they are twins, aren't they? I, I just, I can't imagine. I'm actually quite glad we didn't see Shirley telling Theo or Theo on the phone or whatever, because I, I couldn't take watching another person. And I think it was so interesting the way you saw Shirley go through the classic denial. No, they got it wrong. No, it's not true. No, he always makes stuff up. No, it's not true. It's not true. To, this is your fault. I told you to take it more seriously. Why didn't you? Like, she was going through the seven stages of grief, um, and... Stephen was trying to say, I came home and I saw Nell's ghost, but obviously Shirley was still processing the trauma of it. And I do think as maybe as more time passes from when Stephen had seen the ghost, he may stop believing in it so much himself, or he may start to think, oh, it was just grief talking, but then he saw her there before he even knew she was dead. So I feel like this will confirm his belief in ghosts. I don't, I just, I don't know, and I'm stressed. Um, oh. The old couple who run the property and they live off site or whatever, I really feel like they have got a lot of questions to answer because they see, they, they're so aware that there's weird stuff going on and then there's a door that they gave the master key and then he was like, oh, well, yeah, just knew nothing about that door. That, 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 uh, you do realise he's going to try and like, break the door down eventually to see what's in there or something. I just think like, they, they're so sinister to me because they seem to have this wealth of knowledge about this property and the people that came before. They seem to you know, all oh, my kids hear dogs every night. 
there are no dogs here. They don't, they just, they seem to know so much more. And the fact that they both have really emphasized, oh, we leave the property at night. We don't stay here at night. But then the little creepy blonde girl is there in the day. I don't know, maybe she is just a friend. Um, I am just, it's stressful. I don't, I don't trust them. And I just, oh, I think if I was a parent and my kids were regularly being that spooked at night and like different children from different ages, you know, Shirley's fairly old compared to like Nell and they're all getting spooked by things that happen. I really do feel like leave, move, send the kids to the grandparents. I don't, I don't know. Obviously the concept of this house is I guess they bought this wonderful old manor house for relatively cheap because it's haunted. Um, and now they're, because it's in the district and they're doing it up. And once they do that, they're going to be able to build their dream forever home. That, oh, that just gets you knowing that they're not going to get that. I understand the concept behind this, but I just think your children are visibly getting more and more traumatised by the day. Find, like, I mean, I suppose if they sunk all their money into this building, they can't, like, rent somewhere cheap nearby for the kids or whatever. But just send them to somebody. Take, just, oh, I wish, like, for their own sake. Sorry, I just had a noise in my house. I'm pretty sure it's just my mum, but no, stress as a go. No. Um the banging on the walls, and it sounded like there was something growling, like one of the dogs was inside, and then the kittens died. I just it's all very interesting with what's going on in this. I am intrigued about this. I think the kind of horror that I don't enjoy is when it is just jump scares and it's just like mindless, like making the audience scared. There's the real I'm intrigued about what is going on here, what is causing it, and we're sort of seeing different pieces. I did notice the next episode was called Touch because I Netflix did it's playing the next episode, so I clicked it up and stopped. Um, which suggests that we're doing Shirley, which seems that we're going through the children by age. Um Shirley Theo. I don't know why I'm convinced I want to call Theo Shirley, but I know who Shirley is. Well, the whole thing about the open casket, I can kind of understand it because it is sort of a saying a goodbye, but I for me I don't know, maybe that's more of a thing in America. Um, I know at my nan's funeral, my mum and her siblings did kind of go up to the casket and I don't know whether they just spoke to it or whether it was, you know, I, I know nothing, I, because I just, I wasn't, didn't want to do that. I was able to say my goodbyes to my nan myself. I love her. She's always with me in my heart. Like, you know, I just, the idea of seeing somebody lifeless, I never ever want to see somebody dead. Um, but I can understand the concept of it and you know I know people who regret things but I think I would regret not going to the funeral but I, I wouldn't regret not going to the casket and um, I think in a lot of ways that could actually be quite traumatic for a child especially for like Nell and Luke no wonder they're traumatized even without everything else because they're tiny and they're seeing their mum lifeless and she won't wake up um oh, the migraines have suddenly come back and they're different. Is that ghost affected or is she just going, I mean, is she just going blind or something? I don't know. It's stressful. So yeah, I feel like I'm just really enjoying this dive into each child is what I assume we're getting because we've had Stephen and then we've had Shirley and the way different things have fractured their relationships. And it's so sad to kind of see when Luke first went into rehab, they were such a united family. All of them were there, all five of them were there. They were doing their best, you know, Stephen hadn't written his book yet so they weren't having weird odds there um he definitely should have asked their permission before writing about their actual lives and he definitely when they didn't want him to write it he shouldn't have done it um but then he needed the money so you can understand his side of it and yeah I just think he should have like fictionalized it and changed the names I don't know but this was a very sad episode in a lot of ways um it touched on some really difficult topics like how do you approach death with children how do you get them to understand it with not freaking them out um i really enjoyed this thank you so much i love this one during this show and thank you for watching